Oh yeah, it's that music. It's Soul Bossa Nova. Uh, it's such a cool uh, track. And it, it uh, signifies, of course, every Friday, Free Speech Fridays, half an hour. We get a couple of people who've got uh, plenty to say and don't mind saying it um, to talk about the events uh, of the past week. And I thought we'd do this. It's kind of a post-election one, and because there's been so much going on, I didn't have a chance to do this, and I've been sick. I didn't have a chance to get these guests in together uh, until now, which is kind of interesting because it's D-Day. It's, well, return day, R-Day, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so two very, very uh, regular appearers on the platform and uh, people that I, I know as friends. Um, my two hosts with the most... Um, from Auckland, we'll start in Auckland, we'll work our way down in the country. Uh, the new HQ, Leo Malloy, publican, uh, joins us. How are you, Leo? I'm jolly well this morning, actually, Sean. Feeling very sprightly indeed. Bit of rain in the air, but things are starting to turn up here. It's looking a little bit more positive. All right. And uh, in Wellington, your brother from another mother, the man who runs the Backbench uh, Gastro Pub, Alistair Boyce. Have you two actually ever met? Uh, I don't think we've met in person. Oh, okay. Uh, right. I, I, it's a bit of a surprise, but I don't circulate much, actually. No, you don't. You're very people. unsocial, Leo. Um, hey, yeah, boys, mate, I'm I sorry love... I didn't make it last weekend uh, for the That's rugby, right. but I didn't. must have been uh, terrible. It was an overwhelming uh, sense of disappointment at the end of the game. All right. Did you have a, a do? Did you have people in for breakfast for the rugby last weekend, Leo? Yes, I did, and uh, the incoming Prime Minister attended in, in conjunction with the incoming Minister of Finance and the incoming Minister of Police. They all attended. And did they really? Did their photo Good they Lord. The crowd. Oh, yeah. that's oh, they well. had another. I can't they get they near the guy. Oh, really? Oh, keep us. Oh, okay, well, one on one, I suppose. I don't know. Maybe you want to give them a bit more money, give them a bit more support. All right, well, maybe I want to stop calling him out for telling his bloody MPs off. For having opinions, uh, Leo. Uh, he seems, he seems life, yeah, he seems to have a penchant for wagging his finger and telling people off in public, which I always understood was a mistake, was like a numpty mistake for managers. He's got to be more than a manager, hasn't he, Boise? More than a chief executive if he's going to be the prime minister. Yeah, he does. And uh, you pointed out some issues on the show uh, this morning that are very pertinent. Um, he's got to show some real leadership to uh, see us way, our way through the culture wars and this um, idiocy of governance, which undermines democracy and equality and the equity of, of uh, belief and opinion. But he doesn't want to go there, Leo. That's the feeling I get. He's got well, yeah, people running the focus groups in his ears and he's dreadfully up, worried about upsetting anyone. Yeah, that's apparently true. And people like Nicola Willis, who I have huge respect for, she's quite socially liberal, so you might find she's having a fair bit of input into policy. And oh, quite God. rightly so. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you here on things like code governance, but if you sit down and articulate it properly and what has historically happened in New Zealand, it's not as scary as people sound. Boyce, you're yeah, right. But, but Leo, there. we had an election where people voted against it. And the way democracy works is when people vote against something, you don't do it and you don't continue it. We, if we're talking about three waters, I'm totally with you. I don't like three waters because it erodes and jeopardises democracy. But co-governance and three waters are very different things. One's a symptom, the other one's a cause. And you've got to be able to distinguish between the two. So if you're going to do that, uh, just a little bit more clarity would be good. OK, but I'm just saying Luxon doesn't want to get into anything that's contentious, does he? And, and I, I get Chris Bishop. I'm the ultimate New Zealand version of a Zionist, and I've lived in Israel, But yeah, and I agree with Chris Bishop. But I can see also why Luxon's trying to have unity and a team and no-one outspoken. He, clearly, he's got the, the muzzle on Winston. I mean, normally Winston would be out there yapping about everything in the world, having an opinion. Well, he came and talked to me for it. half an hour on Monday. Yeah, you wouldn't have been controversial, though. You'd just smooth the waters. I know you. <laughs> Uh, Boise, I, I do think um, no matter what happens this afternoon, whoever is in coalition with National is going to have to lend some backbone, some spine to Chris Luxon, right? I absolutely agree. Um, we need both Winston and David Seymour in the tent and at the table uh, as a meaningful part of the government going forward. Yeah, without a doubt. Okay, now if you either of you guys got predictions, I think it will have to be a three-way deal, won't it? 
Leo? Do you want to back first, boy? You, uh, well, this is how I see it. So, basically, uh, National won Auckland, so the Auckland seats are going to be of particular interest to me because the specials will almost certainly support what's already happened in Auckland. So, Twyford, even though he's only 30 behind in Teatatu, he's not Go likely on. to win that. M- Mount Albert, Melissa Lee, um, she's 108 behind. There's every chance in the world she could swing that. Um, of a historical interest to me, Maureen Pugh, Damien O'Connor, I still say Maureen's going to hold that with a 1,000. The interesting one for me is Jerry Brownlee because he would, I like Jerry's personal friend. He would have been a great speaker, but he looks like he might be in a wee bit of bother. And oh, because he's Anderson, only on I've the got... list, so he would go out depending on the outcome. That is interesting, and I see Luxon sent him off to the Pacific Forum. He's going yeah, to that. And, but Chris, Chris Bishop and Jenny Anderson in your backyard is the interesting one because um, Bishop's a, a, a thousand ahead, and I don't think it'll have any material change uh, between, and they'll both still be in Parliament, but I would love Bishop to beat Jenny Anderson just symbolically because Jenny Anderson, you know, Minister of Police, in my view, largely ineffective. I'm not entirely sure she was um, firm with the truth. She had a degree, of, a yeah. degree of elasticity about some of her claims, and I think she should be sidelined. I hope Chris Bishop does it. I'm a Chris Bishop fan. Yeah, so that's the other ones that I'm watching, and I'm particularly interested. He's a in. bit of a wet too, though, unfortunately. Um, Alistair. No, he's not. He's not. <laughs> Alistair, <laughs> what do you think happens this afternoon? And look, do we need to be too concerned about the details? And I know the personalities of various electorates and everything. It's who forms the government, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, uh, I'm not worried about the details too much. We've got a centre right mandate and those three parties have got to get on and form a very strong government and uh yeah well get the country back on track yeah yeah that's what they say we've got uh winston on this afternoon between two and three guys and david seymour as well and we're trying to reach out to mr luxon we may not be woke enough for him, him to talk to <laughs> us uh, uh to be honest uh already though we've already decided there's a change of government though guys haven't we can I ask you both yep. this question? Are you selling more booze as a result? Not yet. <laughs> You're hopeful, boys. Well, we still need the public service actually working again. That's the biggest um, uh, thing that's going to happen after the uh, election is that uh, National does have to be involved in the uh, fight back to retain our public policy back yeah, to Parliament. Yeah, but Boise, I know what you're looking forward to. The, the dockway and the smoking area in Winston Peters. I mean, your just turnover well, is going to go up yeah. incredibly with Winston back uh, in Wellington. Do the math. Do the math. You lose about, what, 3,000 public servants in Wellington, and they shouldn't be employed there anyway, so that's a fair bit of turnover, but you get Winston. It's yeah, that's right. Thousand. And I'll his supporters. <laughs> I'll, exactly. take Winston, I'll take David Seymour, I'll take Nicola Willis, and I'll, I'll take the, <laughs> the uh, talented National Party caucus. All right. Leo, Every time. Leo, business confidence is up, though, and there's a hope, I guess, the property market's bouncing back. you got to feel a bit more optimistic uh, about business and, and hospitality as a result of the election result, no oh, matter what happens in Sava. There's a lot of blood on the streets up here, the big bar in which is a, a yeah. restaurant bar in Newmarket. They went um, tits up yesterday, and they're very good operators. Um, the, there's, mm. there's a lot of rumblings. There's two or three other high rollers to go. There's one I discussed with media yesterday that, um, that's well known to me. I don't think we've seen the shakeout yet, but I think we're going to see a fair mm. bit more of it. I would say, yes, there is blue sky, and yes, we have reasons to be positive, but interest rates, you're looking Q3 next year before there's a significant improvement in interest rates, and I think we've got issues between now and then. What will get us through is the sugar rush next week with Melbourne Cup. Uh, we've got a debate with Paula Bennett and Mark Mitchell this Sunday. It's only a small thing, but it'll help a couple hundred people coming to that. Um, what else is coming up? When's the, the Melbourne future? Cup? I mean, When's the, that's next Tuesday, is it? Now, have you not heard about our Melbourne Cup promo? I've, I've, oh, who, who's well, I had a great... I coming. can remember a few years back having a great Melbourne Cup day there with... And isn't this happier times? I ended up with JT, uh, John Tamahiri yeah. and Willie Jackson, and we had a lovely day. Well, JT will be there again because he's a seagull following the trolley. He never misses out on a free feed. His mate Joe Luce is booked in. The Mayor's booked in. Your mate Martin Devlin's booked in. Half the Warriors are booked in. Shall I keep dropping names anymore? I tell you... What day's this? What it's day's like, this? It's always on a Tuesday. 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 Oh, oh, look, I might, have, I might have business to do in Auckland. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. I wouldn't care. It's a great... I was going to say piss up, but you can't say that on the radio. It's a great guy. Well, you can, you can on this radio, guys. A- a- absolutely. Look, we'll have a quick break and then a couple of other issues, not quite so political that I want... Well, one of them is that I want to talk about. <laughs>
All right, you are on the platform. Sean Plunkett with you uh, until 10 o'clock today. I'm back at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, D-Day, decision day. Um, we get the special votes counted and we know exactly uh, what the parliament looks like uh, post-election uh, night 20, uh, 2023. Um, it is Free Speech Fridays, though. We've got uh, my publican friends, Leo Malloy uh, from HQ in Auckland and Alistair Boyce from the Backbench uh, Gastro Pub in Molesworth Street opposite Parliament, just chewing over the events of the week. Guys, we mentioned it earlier. We mentioned Chris Bishop and his comments on Israel. This is the big international uh, story right now. And what got me, guys, uh, this week I saw some footage taken of a group of people that are pro-Palestine, let's be nice, pro-Palestine um, protest in Auckland. A group of Arab-looking men, let's just be honest, burning an Israeli flag. And I'm all for freedom of speech, Alistair, but that made me deeply uncomfortable. Yeah, it makes me uh, deeply uncomfortable, but I would rather it be out in the open so we know who's saying what and who's doing what. I'd be more uncomfortable if it was hidden behind the scenes and we were uh, watching our backs, which the Israelis and the Jews certainly are right now. It's got haunting parallels to um, 1930s Germany and Europe through the early 40s. Oh, but, but you can't um, say that according to Luxon. You're not allowed to say that, Alistair. Particularly not oh, if you're Chris I can, because I'm a failed uh, Wellington Central candidate, <laughs> so I can say <laughs> whatever I like. So you're saying people should be free to burn the flag, burn an Israeli flag on the streets of New Zealand in public? No, I, I, I don't. I think that's uh, 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 that. I'm uh, surely it's a prosecutable offence. Well, so I think it's a hate no, crime, but then do I agree with hate crime legislation? It is encouraging or making a protected group of people, 10,000 practising Jews in New Zealand, clearly they have, be, have been subject, uh, they're a minority and they're subject to persecution because of their religious blue, uh, views and have been historically. <sighs> I don't know, the Free Speech Union have come out, who are mates of mine, Alistair, have come out and said this is fine. What do you think, Leo? Burning an Israeli flag, is that cool with you? You're down with that? Look, the issue here, of course, is that I'm also a very vocal supporter of free speech, and you have to accept this comes with the territory. It's I uncomfortable, find it though. But, oh, absolutely uncomfortable. But no more uncomfortable than I am with the young Green members, Ricardo Mendes March and Golris Garageman and Chloe Swarbrick, wandering around with a banner that says from the river to the sea, which people are starting to realise now what that means. That's a rallying call. It means Hamas. death to Israel. But, it means yeah. death to all of Israel, from the River Jordan to the Mediterranean. Every single Jew, every resident of Israel has to go into the sea. So that, they both make me uncomfortable. I, I don't like looking at it. But yes, it's an unfortunate fact of life in a democracy where people can express themselves. I don't know. I, I think my tolerance has been tested almost beyond breaking point. We had Lord Sumption in, who the Free Speech Union have got out, and he said, oh, well, it is freedom of speech. Yeah, I don't know. At some stage, I'm almost on the point of saying, screw freedom of speech. I want you to go back. And I'll be honest, I use the terms, you know, camel jockeys and towel heads yesterday. I want you to go back to your own country. Don't bring your hatred here is really what I was on about, Alistair. Yeah, well, hatred induces more hatred. Uh, but And lack of free speech uh, does okay. the same. So yeah. we've, we've got to maintain both. It's really hard not to, um, you know, parallel that hatred back. Really yeah. hard. Okay. <laughs> and I'm the same as you. I grew up, um, you know, <laughs> learning about the Holocaust, and that gave me a a sort of inner sanctum of trying to protect minorities, whether they be Jews or... <laughs> Maori yeah. or whatever minority it is, I, I, the study of what happened to the Jews in the Holocaust of World War II uh, made me aware of minorities and how easy it is for a majority to trample over them. Yeah. And, and yep. yeah, if you know what and I mean. And I was talking, I was mentioning this yesterday, we we're all of an age, guys. I can remember watching Jay Bronowski's The Ascent of Man on TV the world at war on TV, and I can remember the, the the episode on the Holocaust and the world at war, which had a profound impact on me. The first time yeah. I'd really knew about that horror. Leo, you mentioned earlier you've lived on a kibbutz. What's your connection here with Israel? How the hell did that happen? 
But when I was mid-twenties, because I was brought up Catholic, we had quite a biblical sort of a sense, you know, our DNA was quite um, respectful of religion, and I took a liking to the establishment of Israel. I was a bit like Boise, because they were... Mm. You, know, you large, saw the know, girl in the shorts on that movie, Exodus. <laughs> I went to the first of kibbutz up north, north of Tel Aviv, but I lived in the Negev Desert for a while on a mashab, literally just right near where this uh, latest sad incident in October the 7th occurred. And I lived in Alak, which is an interesting little city because, or it's a town. It's at the junction of Saudi Arabia, Jordan, the Sinai, and Israel. And it's a very, it's right in the um, demilitarized zone around the 67 and 73 wars. So it's, a, it's an intense little place full of Arabs and Jews, and it's a little melting pot, a lot of Westerners in there who um, go west to smoke weed and do whatever you do in those days. But you know, it's, a, it's a very interesting experience, but I just wanted to do my little six-month overseas sojourn there just for solidarity and help to understand. Well, help I, never, I never I figured that out. Uh, I never figured that out at all. All right, well, I've had an idea yesterday, and maybe one of you two wants to pick this up. I was thinking then, if it's okay to burn the Israeli flag, I might have a flag-burning party. <laughs> um, and I was thinking we could burn the all black flag. That'd Ooh, be okay. That one. Okay. Um, I'd like to burn the trans rights flag, the rainbow flag. I'd like to burn the rainbow flag. If there's a green police flag, I'll burn the green police flag. All this is going is open slather, right? Right, Boise. I can do this now. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to support you in that. I think um, I'd like to burn right the Palestinian to... flag and the ISIS flag as well. I know it's easy to get like this, Sean, but we've just got to contain ourselves, OK? We've got to stay in a good place and a good state of mind and try and calm the farm. All right, well, I think a barbecue. You ISIS. have a barbecue, you have a flag-burning barbecue, Leo. ISIS and Hamas, I would definitely support the burning of air flags. The rest of them you can leave me out of. OK, well, I can't. Well, I'm Yeah, I'm with Leo. Yeah. Just uh, Hamas is a... a an awful terrorist organisation who control uh, a quasi-state called Gaza. The, the the people are more oppressed by Hamas than they are by the Israelis in my book. All right, guys. Well, you're not... Well, I thought we could have a great little flag burn and, and a good time. Mary Japes could be had by all, seeing we're all so liberal <laughs> about, about burning the Israeli flag. Oh, I, I just thought it'd be a two-way sheet street, but it's clearly not, is it? Um... Look, what else have I got on the agenda? Oh, I want to talk uh, about uh, the issue that, that clearly Chris Luxon doesn't want to talk about, race. Uh, and, and more one for you, Leo. I see Auckland, was it this week or, or last week, has voted to reject Māori wards, specific Māori wards. They've still got this consultative committee that Toa Henare is part of, but the councillors and this is how democracy work, voted against this proposal to have ethnic seats on, on, on the Auckland City Council. Boy, Toe Henare turned around and got into that, didn't he? He said he's just going to oppose anything that the councillors who voted against this do. So there's so many little bits and pieces going on in play here. Clearly, firstly, the mayor abstained, which was really interesting because the mayor's fairly pro Māori. Um, the Independent Murray Statutory Board is currently chaired by Dave Typrey, who's a great guy and has great input. And they're there for, uh, and under the Local Government Act, they promote the matters of significance to local Māori. Yeah. You've got To Henry, who's Tainui, obviously, so he's not, well, strictly speaking, he'll say he is local, but he's not, he's not Whātua. Uh, there's five members of that board, and then you've got the two co-governance trust boards up here. You've got um, Oraki Whātua Reserves Board, and you've got that Tapuna Moanga Authority that manages all the volcanoes here in town. So Māori, local Māori here, and Māori from the Waikato and from other areas are very well represented politically here and very confident and very capable. We have some extremely talented Māori men here, like Narimu Blair, Paul Majuri, they're outstanding people in their fields. So I don't quite know why they needed further representation. It didn't seem democratic to me. I think they're well represented now and I think they're very effective now. So I would tend to be of the view that council made the right decision. But what was of interest to me also is the way council split. A certain type of person went one way and a certain type of person went the other. And it was a very clear split. All right. Well, Alistair, Wellington, that boat's already sailed in Wellington, hasn't it? We've got uh, Maori councillors. Yeah, yeah. It's um, um, from my angle, and uh, it's an erosion of our um, equality and uh, and our democracy. Uh, we've got to get back to one person, one vote. And I think the the government, uh, the the population, and the um, and the election um, gave a mandate towards that. Um, yeah. 
All right. right. And, and, uh, yeah, and foments uh, reverse racism, I'm, yeah. I'm afraid. Now, Boycey, you know, I was actually, this just occurred to me, there's going to be a council by-election in Wellington because Tamitha Paul, because all the greeny, cycling, smelly armpit tourists voted for <laughs> the Greens in Wellington Central... So Tamitha Paul is off to the big house, off to Parliament, which vacates the seat on the Wellington City Council. Boise. Boise, that must have your name on it. Oh, God. That's a bit worse than my Tory party. Come on, come on, I know how frustrating. You can't work with you, Tory You put Barney, a good I face on it, but you were deeply disappointed you didn't get that National Party nomination. Well, which was, strangely enough, me, for the Tam- like... seat that Tamitha Paul won. So why not, Boise? Well, I, why not? And why? Um, I don't know. We'll sit, see see how the cards fall, and uh, if um, if people need a loud voice to for economic well, well, rationality that's right. you and see, to I think you're business, perfect. I was thinking about number. doing it. I was thinking about doing it, and then I thought, no, there I'll must be another you. mate. If you, if I you can do a Sean, I'll back you. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's all about name recognition, Boise. It's name recognition, yeah. so you should. Get, go and prance up and down whatever your main street is in the nude tonight. You'll be all over the Dominion <laughs> tomorrow. Back to the following day. Yeah. Leo, you don't want to see me naked. Hey, guys, <laughs> I, I want to finish I want to finish on a story that we have been featuring every day this week, and I'm going to keep featuring it. Um, the all-too-familiar story of Ruthless Empire Wall, who didn't make his second birthday... Because someone beat him to death or left him with injuries that killed him at his uh, Kayanga Order home in Taita, in Lower Hutt, where he lived with his mother, who was Angel Stormwall um, and was a Crips gang associate by the sounds of it. And everything we thought about this case, of course, is coming to pass. We had the uncle come out yesterday and say he had tried to get... um, uh, I rang a tamariki to intervene before Christmas of last year. Um, too many of these stories, uh, Leo, eh, and going back, you know, 30, 40 years, and we know the list and we know the names, though the horror merges into one huge story. When are we going to do something about this? Yeah, it's sobering. The stats are sobering. The story's sobering. Um, I just did have a quick bra- glance at the stats before we come on here. In the last 40 years, um, baby fatality rates in Māori have doubled and they've halved in, in non-Māori. So that's an indicative um, situation there. But it's the same old story. There's gangs involved, as you said. There's drugs involved. There's a state house. There's violence. There's screaming. There's yelling. There's parties. Oranga Tamariki comes and goes. The extended whānau come and go and they take the baby away sometimes and they don't. But it needs a degree. It needs a plan B for a start, but it needs a degree of <coughs> dignity and composure how we address this. And I listened yesterday to Mira Pekka Rakawa Tate, who I am a fan of, on Hosking Show, and she had a very... Um, a, what I would call an August sort of a view of how it might be dealt with some sort of agency or independent authority that could intervene in these teenage child situations. Uh, I haven't heard what Tariana Turi has had to say about it, but you at all, because I like her a lot as well. Oh, uh, yeah, it. yeah, but none, they've all been involved for so freaking long, to be honest, Leo. There's something wrong. Yeah. There's something so more the fundamentally though, wrong. You know? yeah. Oh, it's I don't know, tie their the bloody tubes, the um, pay people to oh, be well, sterilised, yeah. or maybe have... Geez, Boise, maybe have a social welfare agency like we did under Gronje Moss that knows all the warning indicators and factors and identifies the, these kids as they're born and actually stops them uh, and takes them off their bloody families, Alistair. Yeah, there's a case for that. You've got to get back to a real strong child, youth and family and uh, not treat people on ethnicity necessarily. Maybe it's a warning bell because of the stats. But if you you can't have children uh, born into these families, but it also should be marked as a death knell of um, progressive uh, of the progressive left and how they operate in this space and all sorts of other spaces. Um, they they have a tolerance for criminal intent and bad behaviour that is beyond the pale. Um, and, and it's got to stop, it's got to change, it's got to turn around and get um, outcomes and save lives and babies' lives, you know, it's, it's appalling. It's an important haven't, story. Haven't we been, though, haven't we already been uh, across both sides of the Tasman down this path before where we start taking babies off 
all these young teenage yep. kids of indigenous extraction, and it never ends well. And hopefully they're still alive. Well, does it never end well? Because they're alive, Leo. Well, they're called the lost generation now, and you know, oh, they yeah. their life being, it's called, it's described Yeah, which is just leftist rhetoric, to be honest. This is the progressive nonsense I'm talking about, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, thank you both. We covered a lot of ground there. Always good to talk to you both. You guys must meet at some stage. Uh, in, yeah, we'll have a beer, Leo. Day. And when I'm in Auckland, I'll come into you. Yeah. Good on you, boys. And I'll do vice versa if ever I come to Wally. Thank you very much. That'd be great. Thank you very much indeed. There it is, Free Speech Fridays.